In this video, we will make a flamethrower in Gero. Source code for this project is down in the description, and if you find this helpful, please subscribe. So let's slide in. So open up Gero and make this a new 3D scene. And I have a flamethrower model that I'm gonna drag in, and I'll link to it in the description if you want the same one. I'll scale it down to a better size and zoom in. And next, we wanna make particles for it to shoot out. So select the node 3D root and search for GPU and add GPU particles 3D. Hit create, and it will give us a warning, and that's that it want us to create a draw pass. Head over to the inspector and on draw pass, I'm gonna drag this out so it's more visible. On draw pass, on pass one, make a new sphere and on pass one, open the material up and make a new standard material 3D. Open the material up and on vertex color, enable use as albedo and on transparency, enable alpha. This will allow us to change properties of the material in the process material later. So now we can close down the draw pass and go into the process material and make a new particle process material. It will start falling and we can open it up and we can go into the spawn and velocity and we can increase the spread to the max and an initial velocity set that to one. We can close that down and go into the accelerations and on gravity, we can turn the Y to zero and you might want to go in to the, in this case, it's the minus set direction. And I'll put it into the right position onto the flamethrower, something like that. Minus 10 for now works pretty well. And then we can go into the display. On the scale, I'm gonna make a new scale curve, make a new curve texture, open the curve texture up and the curve. And at the end of the fire, I want them to be smaller. I'm also gonna adjust the angle of it with this point here, something like that. I think I'll even make another point somewhere about here to make the curve a little bit more like this. And I can adjust the color of it. So on the color curves, I'm gonna make the color red and we're gonna make an emission for it. So create a new curve texture for the emission and we will make a new curve. Set the max value to 100 and we can add a curve here. That will make them be emissive. I'm gonna try 1000 and see what happens. Okay, it's not much difference. I think that's pretty cool. Now they don't go very far and to make them go further, we can go into the time and set the lifetime to let's say five. Maybe that's a little bit too much, so let's make it two. I think that's better for now. And we can increase the amount to, let's say, 100. And that's more like it. Of course, you can make your own fire particles, but I think this is good for demonstration. And I like setting randomness to one as well. That will give them a little bit more randomness. And now for the actual firing of the particles. So for this, you will need to get our uh, input, go into project and project settings. And on input map, we need a new action. So this could be fire and just hit add. And the event we want for the fire is the mouse one. So we want mouse button and then we want the left mouse button. And then we hit OK. Now we'll add it to the fire one. We can hit close. And now we need some way of uh, changing the particle with the input. And for that, we need a script. So select the node 3D and attach a new script to it. We can call this fire and we can remove all the functions in here and we can make a new function and this can be a function input and that's a built-in function. And then we want to check if the event dot is action is action pressed and the action we want to look for is fire. We have it right here. We can press enter. Then we want to check if the event is the action pressed and the action we want to look for is the fire one. I changed the gravity to the X instead since that was my reference. So go into the script and what we want to do is we want to check if the particle, so that's the GPU particles 3D. We can drag this into our script and what we want to check is if the process material so dot process material and the process material property we want to check for is the gravity so we do dot gravity and the gravity we want to check for is the x so we want to do dot x and we want to check for if it's less than our max value that we give it so in this case it's less than 10 then what we want to do is get the gpu particles 3d as well and if it's less we can get process material gravity dot x and make it more. So let's say if it's less, it gives plus one on the gravity and it makes the emitting true. So we can do dot 
emitting and make it true. Another if statement to check if the action is released. So if it's not uh, pressed anymore, we want it to stop emitting, right? So we can do that by if the input is action released and the action fire. Then what we want to do is get the GPU particles 3D as well. And we can get the process material gravity dot X and make it equal to zero. And if we release it, it will go back to zero. And if we try this out now, we don't have a camera to show it off. So I'm gonna add a new camera to our scene. I'm gonna get a nice view of it. And I'm gonna press Control Alt M, make the camera snap to our view, play the scene. And I'm gonna save this as flame thrower. And now if I press my mouse, it will add one to it. You can see it moves slightly, but it's not adding it again since it has no way of knowing of the time that I've been holding it for. But it goes back to one. It's not that noticeable right now, but I can close this down. And for us to let it know that I've been holding it for longer, we need a timer. So select node 3D and add a timer. And we can set the wait time to 0.1. And inside of this, if we're holding it, we want to start the timer. So we can get the timer and we can start it. And then we need to do something when it ends. So on the timer, go into the node and we can connect the signal timeout. That's when the timer stops. Double click on it and connect it. And here we can do another if statement. We can get the same if statement from here and we can essentially just copy this part and put it inside of here without the indents. And I will check so if it's less than 10, then it will give more. And we also want to start the timer again inside of this one to let it know that it's still being hold. So we can start the timer again. And now if we run this, it should actually work. I'm holding the mouse down and I stop holding it, holding it down and stop holding it. And it's not perfect since the GPU particles by default is set to 10 on the gravity. So if we set this back to zero and we can make a new function so we can make this a process physics process and we can get the GPU particles and just print the uh, process material dot gravity dot X, put it inside of a print statement. So we need to do print and then parentheses and we put this inside of the parentheses and now it will print the gravity so if we play this again it will print zero and all the way up to 10 and back down to zero wait it keeps printing 10 hmm. and then it's still at 10 since we're not stopping the timer so in the released statement we can set emitting to false since we don't want it to emit anymore false and then we can get the timer and we can stop it. So timer dot stop. And now if we run this, it will go from zero to 10. And if I release it back to zero, let's try that again. It's pretty quick. You might want to make it slower or faster. I don't know, depending on what you think. You can even make it plus more. So you can make plus two and plus two. That will go out a little bit faster if you do that. Something like that. It's quite bland and boring. So I'm going to go into the 3D view and add a world environment and add a sun and play it again. And now it should show with the emission and that's more like it. And you probably want this in some way to detect if it hits something. So on the node 3D, you could add a raycast. So raycast 3D and we can put it as a child to the particles and just to get the same position and then reset the transform position so it's in the same location and then on the raycast we can set the direction so so we want it to go in the x direction so that's 10 we can also set the gravity on this one to 10 to align it to the raycast so on the max distance it's actually longer than 10 so something more like 20 is the length that it goes out in and I can increase the thickness so it's easier to see. So that's on the debug and make it something like that. I want to make it yellow so it's easier to see. So that's pretty accurate with the length that it's going out in. And then you would, similar to the particles, you would increase the length of the raycast to match with the particles. And then you would connect the signal if the raycast did something and you could potentially also do an area 3d to match it up and you could use a raycast or a area 3d to detect the length if you're using raycast you probably want to use several raycasts at the sides so that would be probably two raycasts one at each side and area 3d you simply just need one 
You probably don't want it to be emitting at start as well, so we can disable emitting on the particles. And if I run it, it's nothing, right? And then if I hold on my mouse button, it goes to 10 really quick since it's moving in increments of 2. I'm gonna put it back to increments of 1. Bang. And that's how you do it. Flamethrowing Gido. Thanks for watching and special thanks to our Kofa members for making this video possible. If you want to support our work and have your name be featured in future videos, check out our Kofa in the description and we will see you in the next one.